the chain rule here? Chain rule says, sure, it is cosecant, but if there's something special in there besides an X, that means a chain rule because that's a composition just like this one was, just like oh, what's the other one? Just like that one was, just like that this one was. That's a composition. You need a chain rule there. If you just give me the derivative of cosecant with x cubed or the derivative of cosecant with 3x squared, you're not hitting the money on this class, right? You're, you're missing the chain rule. You're missing some factors of x. You're missing a whole lot of stuff here. So this is great, sure. Now let's take the derivative of cosecant x cubed. What's the derivative? The chain rule says take the derivative of cosecant. So what's the derivative of cosecant? Okay. Let me change it to a bracket too. Negative cosecant cotangent of of what? Good, because this says with chain rule, you take this derivative, great, I just do that, but you leave the inside alone for now. Wouldn't that be cosecant x to the third cotangent x to the third? Or is it, is it okay to leave it? Oh yeah, sorry. Did I forget? Oh, I did forget that. Shoot. I knew something looked funny. Thank you. So this says when you do this, cosecant is cosecant cotangent. So cosecant x was cosecant x cotangent x. What our x is is x to the third in this case. So we go, okay. X to the third. X to the third. <laughs> now what? What's the inside? X to the third cube. Sure, it looks ridiculous. Yeah, I know that. But can you do it? Do you see where it's all coming from? How it's all fitting together? Is is it really, really all that bad? Not really. It's just you got to be careful. Really careful. I mean, the only, the, probably the hardest thing is memorizing cosecant. There you go. Hardest thing here is derivative of cosecant is negative cosecant cotangent. Hopefully that's right. Is that right? Just check your notes. Okay, all right. Because here, well, general power rule, sure, we got that down. Calculus is done. Here, derivative of this one, very easy, 3x squared. Derivative of this one, that's chain rule. This is negative cosecant cotangent. You do not change the inside. You multiply by the derivative of the inside. That's going to be 3x squared. That's where we're getting the 3x squared. Are you with me on this so far? Okay, let's see if I have room for this stuff. Go right here. So one half. All this to the negative one half. squared negative cosecant cotangent and lastly we have a little piece 3x squared hope that fit You mean here and here? Right. Or is it just stay with cosecant cotangent? This right here ends the parentheses right there. So that 3x squared, this 3x squared is not associated with that x cubed. Right? So this does not get distributed to here. This right here is 3x squared plus this entire nasty looking expression. Okay, that's what that is. So when we try to simplify this just a little bit, Let's look what happens. We're going to get 1 half x cubed plus cosecant x cubed to the negative 1 half. We're going to get a big bracket. 3x squared doesn't change. You don't distribute to that. That was just a standalone small derivative 3x squared. This, we're going to pretty this up a little bit. 
Positive, negative, plus minus, what's that going to be? Negative. Minus. I'm going to move the 3x squared out front. So this will be minus 3x squared cosecant x cubed cotangent x cubed. And that's your group. That's pretty nasty. Can you follow it? Yes or no? Yeah? Or like, ooh. There's no simple way. So can you, would it be correct if you, if you would go 3x squared minus 3x squared cosecant x cubed cotangent x cubed over two sure. times? Sure. I'm going to show you that right now. So if you do want to put this back into this format, this would be. I mean, like, do you want to, or can we just leave it as that? At this point, it could go either way. If I give it to you as a root, probably think it back as a root. That's generally the idea. Give it to you as exponents, leave them to exponents. Um, also, one more thing, if some of you guys want to get fancy with this and factor out 3x squared, you'd have 3x squared times parentheses 1 minus that. Uh, sometimes identities will help with that. Sometimes you can do identities. A lot of 1 minus stuff when you have squares happens. Uh, this thing, I don't know if you can simplify, simplify that anymore or not. Because um, I, I made stuff off my head. But what you could do, one last final thing would be this. If you made it there, if you can make it there, that's fine for me. That's great. So we did general power rule. We got it. Here's inside not changing. Derivative of the inside. Got it. We're going to do 3x squared. Derivative of this is a chain rule. Chain rule says negative cosecant x, cotangent x. So we leave that inside alone. Multiply by the derivative of the inside. And then after that, it's a little bit of simplification. Originally, I feel okay with this problem. Sure, they're nasty. Yeah, I get it. I mean, they, they don't look fun, but they're useful. What did you just find? <laughs> yeah, it's slope. All this means is m. It's slope. <laughs> m. M for this. I think Kurt might look at. I hate to be dealing with that graph. Oh yeah, I don't even know what that looks like. Not a clue. <laughs> a little bit. Probably all the squiggly lines, a little place. Don't know. <laughs> don't really care, honestly. <laughs> You ready to keep going? Two more. Two more. What do you want to do first? You want to do the hard one or the harder one? Harder. harder. You want to do the harder one? Yeah. Okay. All right. You asked for it. We have three more, actually. <laughs> the hardness for the last two and the more. <laughs> Notice one thing, please. Uh, I could give this to you with a slightly different look. Check this out. If I give it to you like this, would you verify that that's exactly the same thing? You probably, if, unless you have a, t a uh, function of x up there, probably shouldn't use quotient rule here. If you use quotient rule with this, it's going to explode in your face. <laughs> Papers are going to no! <laughs> Done. Yeah, it's not going to handle this problem. <laughs> need a special paper for that. Okay. <laughs> they don't sell in stores. Uh, no, do this. 
Okay, if, unless you have a function of x, because you don't want to deal with that either. If you had a function of x and you move this up top, you're talking about product rule. You can do that, it's fine. But that's just a constant. Move that up for me, would you? That, and that way you just use a general power rule instead of a quotient rule. Quotient rule with this would be ridiculous. So verify that's the same. Then you can start looking at it. So we're going to identify what we're doing on this problem. I need to see the pieces. What's the biggest piece? General, general, general power rule. Very good. General power rule encompasses this whole entire problem. Now let's, let's walk all the way through it. Within the general power rule, after we do that, we're going to come down to these two things, right? Yeah. What's the derivative of the three? Zero. That's great. So we can, we'll be able to do that one nice and easy. How about this piece? What encompasses this? Just this. Is it product or chain? Chain. Product and chain. Product encompasses the whole thing, doesn't it? Yeah. Now within the product rule, I'll take a derivative of x squared. That's that's easy. Two x. And then I'll have to take a derivative of this little piece right here. What What is this little chain. piece? Chain. That's a chain rule. So we're doing general power rule. We will have a product rule within that. We'll have a chain rule within that. Okay? It's nice to think about those things, though. Nice to think of it just kind of like a, a graphic organizer or an organizer, for advanced organizer for your thoughts. Ready? Yeah. Woo! Yeah, yeah, but they're easier. Sort of. <laughs> sort of. Yeah, sort of. Let's get to it. Come on, you tell me what to do. What am I going to do now? Drop your Good, keep everything the same. Yeah, negative two, right? No. You know how many mistakes I saw in your homework with that? Be careful. I mean, it, it, it would be so sucky if you knew how to do this stuff and you gave me negative two here, right? That would suck. Because I'm like, oh, you know what you're doing. Gone. No, don't do that. It's negative four. Yeah, negative four. Subtract one from that. And then, what now? Um, then we multiply it by the derivative of the inside. Write that out. Go for the derivative of the inside right now. When we say the inside, we mean the entire expression that you basically ignored. So you should have that on your paper. Do you have that on your paper? Yes. Hey, calculus is done here. You're done with that. We're just working on this piece over here. Let's take the derivative of this piece over here. So this is negative 3 x squared cotangent x squared. All right. Negative 4. You're done with that piece times. Probably want a bracket. You need a bracket. Big bracket. Yeah, lost stuff. Big bracket. Why big bracket? Well, let, let's look at that. Uh, derivative of 3. Oh, that's nice. That's a nice one. If it was just another expression, we could have taken a simple derivative just like we did right here. Right right there. So no problem. This is 0. I'm not even going to write the 0. Derivative of 3 is 0. It's constant. Let's fo focus on this one. You said what happens here? Change. Which is why we need a bracket. Because Oh, I'm sorry, no. Product, 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 product. Product. Which is why we need a bracket, because we're going to have an addition in there. Product means plus. Do you follow? So we need that bracket to organize that. This says, okay, I'm going to have three's gone, that was a zero. So this goes to zero. This says the derivative of the first times the second. Are you seeing how all our rules are coming back to haunt us? Or help us? How you want to look at it? Uh, plus or minus, folks? Plus what? Finish this off. You gotta, you gotta say it. 